All right. Uh, good afternoon to those of you on the East Coast. Good afternoon also to those of you on the West Coast. I'm your host, Brandon Troy, host and co-creator of Movers and Shakers Unlimited. And uh, as you can see from the title that we have there, we have a great guest uh, on tap for you guys. Um, it's from the film uh, La Soga uh, Salvation, the one and only Manny Perez. Let me bring him on now. Hey, th thank you for having me so much. It was a pleasure. It's really a Absolutely. pleasure. Thank you so much. Absolutely, man. Um, so just, just talk to me. Just to start, um, can you tell me just a little bit about just that process of just journeying back, you know, with this, this character? Got you. Well, see, the character is uh, an ex-sicario, a hitman, who basically was the son of a butcher. He was a butcher. He was... Uh, he left his country, which is Dominican Republic, moved to the United States because he's running away from his past, lived here for 10 years, and uh, his past is basically knocking on his door. So that's where the film starts. Sure. Uh, not, and I just... Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. <laughs> so, so now, so the character is sort of has to deal with his past and uh, 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 a past that he doesn't want nothing to do with anymore. But uh, it's just part of his journey, part of finding himself again, um, which I think is beautiful to write about someone with a past like that. And that's what I sort of wanted to uh, made La Soga Salvation um, because of that reason. There's so much to write about a man with that world. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and I was just saying, just, you know, just as an actor, you know, from that perspective of, um, you know, sometimes you have opportunities to revisit characters and sometimes you don't. Uh, and, you know, in revisiting those characters, you know, you were at one point, you know, perhaps in your life, you know, as a person um, and in your stage as an artist when you're doing, you know, that role. And then, you know, obviously as as you when you revisit that role, you've done, you know, had a chance to do other roles as well. And so you're, you know, it's kind of like it's almost like riding, you know, riding a a, a bike again that you know that you maybe you left behind um, a, a little ways back. So uh, I guess from that, from the art artistic perspective, uh, can you talk a bit about that? Of of you know, sure. having the opportunity to revisit a character and and perhaps you know some things that you feel like they still feel the same, and some perhaps in that time you feel have have changed for you as an artist and return into that character. Got you. Well, no, that's a great question. Question and thank you. The, the, the good thing is that I'm also the writer. So uh, and 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 that's the beauty of maturing this character and making this character it was ten years ago when La Soga original came out. Um, he was a, a a young man trying to find his life, and now La Soga Salvation. He's an older man uh, with a, a lot more experience with life. A, a man sure. who's searching for love, and uh, and and to me as an actor, since I played him ten years ago, I I feel the same in my life. My life is now a more a more of a mature actor. I respect the craft a lot more than when I was that actor playing that character ten years ago. So now you will see the difference in me as an actor, and you will see the difference in the character as a develop as he developed into this older man. Who, who had a past that he wants to forget. Outstanding. And, you know, additionally, when, when you're revisiting character and have an opportunity to do, you know, a sequel, if you will, uh, you know, there's always that idea of, you know, topping yourself and having that kind of that element of escalation in that story of, of things progressing further. So, you know, as you said, with this character, it, it, there, there are a lot of, you um, uh, uh, elements of, you know, trauma and, you know, violence that are, that's, you know, obviously clearly a part of his past. And in terms of having that read on screen of showing that continued escalation of where things start and, and how things are continuing to progress. Can you speak to that as well? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. It's, you know, it's, it's, the, again, the, the beautiful thing about this type of character that he's just filled with, with drama, uh, I should say. And then me as a writer, director, have to sort of, and not think of it as, a, I'm gonna take the actor out of, out of the, the math of what I'm trying to say. Sure. Is that as a writer, director, I'm trying to give this story more, more angles. Uh, so it, it's not your, your it, so it won't be 
a cliche character that 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 what people have done with a Latino sicario, but more like, okay, how can I make this character different than what I've seen Hollywood do or done with Latino sicarios? And I just feel like this man is just a he's just a common regular dude who's trying to get by in life, but he happens to have a horrible past that he has to deal with and he doesn't want to. And and I feel like that to me is the beauty of of developing this character and making him what he is now in 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 salvation in the soul of salvation. Outstanding. And one thing that I will say also, you know, in in seeing the film and uh what you normally have in uh in a lot of sequels sometimes there's a tendency to be very safe in terms of the choices that are made and i don't feel like that's the case with this film without giving anything away you know in terms of raising the stakes and there being stakes uh can you talk about that also because i feel a lot of times um that's something that that kind of like drives me nuts when it comes to a lot of as much as i like sequels there's a tendency of knowing that things are very safe because okay it, 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 this without like I'm trying not to to delve into it, but like just that idea of there being elements of danger involved and yeah. following through with that. Yeah, well, you know what's funny? I'm not a writer. I mean, I didn't take, I didn't go to school for writing. I went to school for acting. But I've read so many horrible scripts that I'm like, ah oh, man, it started off great. Second act went nowhere. The third act just died. So I was like, I'm gonna write a script where every ten minutes. There's a, a twist, there's a change, there's a moment you're like, ah, what's gonna happen next? That's what I wanted to write. And I feel like that's, and again, I'm not a writer, but that's something that I wanna see on the screen. That's something that I wanna see uh, 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 act. I wanna, I wanna direct that, 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 that type of world. So that's how I sort of looked at it as, as I wrote it. And, um, and that's, you know, and, and, and again, it's a learning process for me because I'm not, but I'm learning how to just, show a good movie, a, a, a good two hours or an hour and a half for you to be home and say, you know what? I like this. This got me on the edge of, on the edge of my seat. And I feel like that's, that's the beauty of like filmmaking, you know? If you can sort of make someone feel that, I feel like you accomplished something. Definitely. And, you know, with, uh, I want to, I'm going to, uh, delve into like the business aspect when it comes to what, what we were just talking about the stakes aspect because i find that fascinating too you know sometimes when when there's a a courage in making certain choices in terms of making sure that it is uh um able to be to to reach a wider audience a lot of times there is a pressure, you know, from outside forces. Oh, could you maybe change that, or could you maybe have another cut of that where it, it things happen differently? Like, was that something that that came up in doing this in doing this project, or were you kind of safe in, in terms of like what you were able to to do? And, and from well, you funny. laughing, it sounds like like yeah, it was no, the that came up, that came up, <laughs> that came up like so many times. And the reason how I sort of stopped that from changing my script is that I, uh, I hate to say this, but I invested my own money into this film. So the last word will be my word. And I just felt Absolutely. like a good story, it's a good story. And I don't want you to change it because that's not, you go make your own movie. I want to do this version of it. And I felt like the journey of the character, um, I don't want to give anything away, but the journey, it has to happen for him to be what he is. It just has to happen. Um, um, so that's something that I, I, I was very conscious when I was writing the character and his journey um, is to make sure that he has to face himself, which he's afraid of himself. So that's where I wanted to go with it. And there was no other way to do it, but that's the only way. <laughs> for sure, for sure. And, um... You know, obviously, we we have you know this this uh you know uh, this film uh, um on its way, and you probably get this uh, you know asked all the time in terms of, or maybe you've had it asked to you already of perhaps continuing this story story further. You know, 
right now are you just kind of you know resting on on you know this current story or are you already have it swimming in your head okay i think i have a picture of where where this character could go next or or is this this it dude you're asking the you're asking the most amazing question uh thank no you, thank you <laughs> thank you there is a part that he's going to continue uh he actually returns to his motherland and he's looking for justice and uh and uh so yeah, no, I think part three is is where um, he goes full back. It exactly, becomes a complete a hundred a three sixty circle. Is that what they three sixty? Yeah, uh, a three sixty circle on where he started and what happened and how he ended back to where it all started. All right, awesome, awesome stuff, uh, Manny. So um, currently. We know that uh, the film will be arriving in theaters and on demand on January 28th, correct? Yes. Yes. Gen exactly, exactly. January 28th, limited theaters, uh, mostly cities where mostly Latinos. But if you can't go to the theater, you can watch it from your home on demand. Um, uh, on demand means if you have Verizon, Cox, you have Spectrum, just go on demand and you'll find La Soga. And what other, any other uh, uh, cables, subscriber or connection you have you they'll have on demand all right awesome stuff well manny thank you so much uh for your time um again as uh manny said just now uh for uh la soga salvation it arrives in theaters uh on and on demand excuse me on january 28th manny i want to thank you so much for hopping on to the show um and spending some time to talk about it um and other than that can you tell folks where they can find you before uh, I yeah. wrap up. Oh, great. No, you can find me on t Twitter and on, on Instagram, Manny Perez One, Manny Double N Y Perez One. And I'm there. And usually I'm always responding. So um, it's a pleasure. And thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. There you guys have it. Again, I have Manny Perez here from La Soga Salvation. I'm your host, Brandon Troy, host and co creator of Movers and Shakers Unlimited. Thanks so much for joining us uh, for this episode. And uh, I will see you guys soon. Later. Thank you. Take care.